With the release of the 4070 Super last week, Nvidia is following that up with the 4070 Ti Super, a faster variant that should slot in between the vanilla 4070 Ti and the 4080. This model is based on the RTX 4080 and comes with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which is a nice bump up from the existing 4070 Ti. For those of you gaming at 1440p, does this card ring the bell of value and performance? And while shopping for a 4070 Ti Super, are there any cards that you should be looking out for? Or are they all pretty good? Taking a quick look at our test system, we are running an Intel Core i9-14900K, 32 gigabytes of DDR5-7200 memory, Windows 11 Professional with VBS enabled, and the latest press drivers from NVIDIA. The 4070 Ti Super is equipped with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which makes it a great 1440p card, so that's where we'll take a look first. Our baseline for all these charts is going to be the Zotec Super Trinity at 100%, and everything higher than that will be a bit faster and everything lower will be a bit slower. And right out of the gate, we can see that the RTX 4070 Ti, the non-Super Edition, is roughly 5% slower than the 4070 Ti Supers. And all the cars managed to outslug the 3090 Ti, at least at this resolution. The MSI Super Ventus is the only card that's a little bit slower than the Zotac, while the Galax, Pollet, Gainward, PNY, Asus, Gigabyte, and Colorful are all slightly faster. The only real outlier here is the Asus RTX 4070 Ti Super Strix, which is 5% faster than the Zotac and roughly tied with the RX 7900 XT. This does make it the fastest 4070 Ti Super by a measurable margin, but even with that boost in performance, it still lags behind the RTX 4080, meaning that the 4070 Ti Super is much closer to the 4070 Ti. And when looking at the minimum FPS at 1440p, things don't change all that much, with the Strix still basically matched with the RX 7900 XT, and the MSI Super Ventus still having a slight lead over the RTX 3090 Ti and 4070 Ti. Bumping up these tests to 4K does start to benefit the flagship cards, and the RTX 3090 Ti has pulled ahead of basically every other 4070 Ti card, and is now sitting a little bit atop the colorful Super Vulcan. The ASUS Super Strix is a little bit faster still than the RX 7900 XT, but it does start to lag behind the RTX 4080, which is now 18% faster than the stock 4070 Ti Super. On the flip side, all these cards gain on the vanilla RTX 4070 Ti and are about 9% faster than the old model. This does equate to only about 6 FPS at 4K, and neither of these cards really target this resolution, but the extra VRAM will probably come more in handy as time goes on. All these cards are pretty close to overkill at 1080p, with CPU bottlenecks starting to become a factor, but with all these cards pushing north of 170 FPS, it is a good option if you are looking for high refresh gaming. Even enabling ray tracing doesn't change up the order of the cards too much, at least for the Nvidia ones, with all the tested cards being faster than even the RX 7900 XTX. Power consumption on all these cards is both interesting and not really that interesting. Our baseline Zotac Super Trinity is using 282 watts while gaming, which is a little bit more than the RTX 4070 Ti at 277 watts. What's more interesting is the ASUS Super Strix, while being definitively the fastest card, is not the most power hungry. Using 296 watts while gaming, which is less than the Gigabyte Super Gaming and the PNY Super Verto at 297 watts. Also of note is the MSI Super Ventus, which is using 294 watts, despite being the slowest card at stock. Enabling VSync at 60Hz does right the ship for the most part, with the ASUS RTX 4070 Ti Super Strix now using 81 watts, which is the most of any of these cards we tested. That is less power than the RX 7800 XT, which is at 92 watts, but more than the RTX 4090, which is 79 watts, but overall not too bad. The MSI RTX 4070 Ti Super Ventus does redeem itself though, and it's now the most efficient at 60 hertz using only 73 watts. It is worth noting that the RTX 4080 Ti only uses 68 watts, so this faster card does use less energy than all of these, but only by 5 to 10 watts. Fan noise is usually one of the biggest differentiators when comparing partner cards, especially when performance and power usage is roughly the same. 
The quietest card in our testing was the ASUS Super Tough in the Quiet BIOS with only 26.8 dBA. This was followed by the ASUS Super Strix in the Quiet BIOS at 28.4 dBA, the Gainword Super Phoenix at 28.6, and the colorful Super Vulcan at 29.8. With anything under 30 dBA being considered whisper quiet, it's a very good showing for these cards. The other cards aren't really that much louder either, with the MSI Super Ventus coming in at 30.2, the Zotac Super Trinity coming at 30.9, the PNY Super Verto at 31.2, the ASUS Super Tough in its normal BIOS at 31.5, the Pollet Super Jetstream at 31.7, and the ASUS Super Strix at 32.6 with its normal BIOS. That does leave a few quote unquote loud options in this bunch, with a colorful Super Vulcan with its turbo BIOS coming in at 33.1, the Gigabyte Super Gaming in its quiet BIOS coming in at the same 33.1 and the Galax Super EX coming in at 33.5. That does leave the Gigabyte Super Gaming with its normal BIOS at 36.6, which is the loudest of all the cards tested, but even this isn't that loud and could be quieter than the ambient noise in many rooms, and you could always use the quiet BIOS. This does make the normalized cooler performance pretty boring and also rather interesting at the same time. Normalized at 35 dBA, which is pretty much louder than all the cards, and at 285 watts, which is more than most of these cards use at stock, we can see the two best performers, the ASUS Super Strix at 57.1C and the Gainword Super Phoenix at 57.9C, is only 10 degrees cooler than the two worst performing cards, the MSI Super Ventus at 66.8 and the PNY Super Verto at 67 degrees, which really showcases that all these cards have a pretty good quality cooler. Overclocking performance can vary a lot from card to card, even from cards from the same manufacturer. But in our testing, we found that the colorful RTX 4070 Ti Super Vulcan WOC was the fastest card after overclocking. It was negligibly faster than the ASUS Super Strix and the Gigabyte Super Gaming, but really all the cards performed very similar to each other with the MSI Super Ventus being the slowest. This does mean that there's a 6% swing between the best performance and the lowest performance, which is right in line with our stock performance data. But when it comes to value, how does the 4070 Ti Super compare? Well, while the performance might be a little closer to the 4070 Ti than the 4080, at least the price is more comparable to the 4070 Ti as well. Our highest performing card at stock, the ASUS RTX 4070 Ti Super Strix, comes in at $950, but it is still much cheaper than the $1,200 of the RTX 4080. The colorful Super Vulcan is a bit slower than the ASUS at stock, but it does overclock very well and is $50 cheaper, so it does provide a bit more value there. The Gigabyte Super Gaming and Gainward Super Phoenix come in neck and neck at $850, with the Gigabyte overclocking a bit better than the Gainward in our testing, but the Gainward coming with a better cooler, so it's a bit of a toss-up there. After that, sandwiched around the vanilla RTX 4070 Ti, we have the MSRP models. These all come in at $800, which is only $50 more than the RTX 4070 Ti, and the ASUS RTX 4070 Ti Super Tough leads the pack being 2% faster than our Zotac, while being the same price and also coming with a very good cooler. That's followed closely by the Galax Super EX, the Pollet Super Jetstream, the PNY Super Verto, and finally our baseline Zotac Super Trinity and MSI Super Ventus. All these cards provide a very similar level of performance, all have decent coolers, and all come in at the same price, so any of these would be a pretty good option, though there is a slight nod toward the ASUS Super Tough. But if you are looking for the best deal, these cards probably aren't it. Even at $700 or $100 off the MSRP, the RTX 4070 Super, non-TI, is still a better value at $600. And while slower, they both still target 1440p. And if you're not big on ray tracing or NVIDIA's suite of features, the RX 7900 XT is both faster and cheaper than the RTX 4070 Ti Super. But if you are looking to stay in the NVIDIA lineup, the 4070 Ti Super is still the best option for this level of performance. 